Welcome to Primary today. We're going to start off with an opening song. Our opening song is Search, Ponder, and Pray from the Come Follow Me Music 2020 YouTube channel. Today we are going over our last chapter in the Book of Mormon, Moroni chapter 10. And we're, um, the line upon line for Come Follow Me Scripture Project YouTube channel is going to sum it up for us. It is finished. With 3,000 years of Nephite and Jaredite history and teaching, Mormon and Moroni's epic editing and abridgment is now just about complete. And now Moroni reflects back on his only friends, Lehi, Nephi, Enos, Mosiah, Alma, Helaman, Nephi, and the prophets of old. And after adding his father, Mormon's great sermons, Moroni gets to have the final word of final words. What would he say? What would you say? now gone through his own epic change from sad lonely survivor to fully understanding his super special role and what is that he is the messenger the man who will deliver this book chocked full of the fullness and restored gospel and now it's time for him to put the capstone message on this awesome work and so in this, our final chapter, Moroni really expects that we've read this big, complex, amazing story and feasted on these tasty, delectable doctrines and scrumptious stories and have been filled with the bright light of faith. Because with this truly epic, incredible story, Moroni knows we're going to need a little help really, truly knowing if these are just some really fascinating words and stories, or if this really is God's word, like a huge signpost that God's amazing work today is preparing us for Christ's coming. No, God didn't leave much archaeological, geographic, or scientific evidence, and we know science is still a work in progress, but he left us a book, an epic, amazing book of spiritual evidence, and this spiritual evidence is right here, meant for us to fully spiritually test and digest. And so now that we have it in front of us, Moroni exhorts, powerfully inviting us to first prepare our hearts 
by pondering how wonderfully kind God has been with his children and us personally. Second, he invites us to really sincerely, with strong desires, kneel and ask God if this book is not true. Now wait, not true? Why ask if it's not true? Well, by now, if we've read the whole book as honest truth seekers, we should already pretty much have felt the spiritual evidence in our hearts that this book is true. So, at this point, with a strong belief, we are confirming what we've now grown to know and feel all along. Well, does it work? Yes, absolutely. And with that, Moroni tells us the same process works to know the truth of all things. Yep, we can talk to God about everything, small or big, and he promises he'll direct our paths. Yes, this spiritual knowledge is one of God's greatest gifts. And who doesn't love a great gift? With so much gifting, God through the Holy Ghost gives us some really, really awesome gifts. And while today so many love the idea of superpowers, these really are God's true spiritual powers and are much better than being good with a bow staff. And so Moroni lists just a few of God's great spiritual gifts. But just being a child of God alone is a pretty awesome gift. I mean, we could just as easily be a rock or a dolphin. So remember, those people, and even those people, have great gifts too. And God greatly desires us to discover our own gifts and use them for the good of others as this world really does need our help. And now, Moroni finishes, for real this time, like all the best prophets, including Christ, quoting the always visual Isaiah about the great gathering of Israel like a tent expanding with stakes that will all be fulfilled. And, in case we miss the book's most important gospel message, Moroni sublimely summarizes it beautifully. Yes, come unto Christ, that together with him, you are made perfect. Avoid sin, completely love God, and you will get his grace and faith and will be made clean through his atonement. And with that, his final, final, final goodbye, Moroni hopes that this book penetrates our hearts and that we do indeed join God's team and become one of his covenant people. So is this the end for Moroni? Oh no. Moroni's mission as the messenger continues 1400 years later in 1823 as he gets to deliver this earth-shaking spiritual evidence into the hands of God's newly called prophet Joseph Smith for these writings to go forth and flood the earth with the light of Jesus' good news once again and establish his true and living church and the full covenants to bless the lives of billions as we prepare for the return of Jesus Christ. And so begins our next season as we get to see how God again calls a prophet and restores his church for the final gathering. for ourselves that the Book of Mormon is true. Here's a picture of Moroni burying the gold plates. Describe different things that you see. On these plates were written the words that we now read in the Book of Mormon. Here's a Book of Mormon. In Moroni chapter 10 verse 4, Moroni says, When you get these scriptures, I would encourage you to ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if these things are true. And if you ask with a sincere heart, with real intent, and having faith in Christ, He will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. We can ask God if the Book of Mormon is true, 
and he will send the Holy Ghost to testify to us. How I Know by Damon M. Age 8 Our family has a tradition when we go to bed at night. We have a spiritual time where we read something from the scriptures or the friend, sing a primary song, and say a prayer together. We decided to read the Book of Mormon Children's Book with pictures. The last chapter talks about Moroni putting the gold plates in a stone box and burying them in the ground for someone to find someday. He wrote a promise to whoever reads the plates that if they will ask Father about the words written on the gold plates, they will find out the words if the words are true and if they come from Heavenly Father. At the end of the book, there's a painting of a little boy kneeling by his bed, praying. Dad showed us the picture and told us that when he was young, he also prayed about the Book of Mormon and found out that it was true. He said that Heavenly Father doesn't usually speak to us with words. Instead, He speaks to our hearts and minds with feelings from the Holy Ghost. After we finished reading, we sang a primary song. Then I asked Dad if I could be the one to say the prayer. I knelt next to my de- bed with my dad and my little brother. During the prayer, I asked Heavenly Father if the Book of Mormon was true. I felt warm inside and very good. After the prayer, I told my dad how I felt. He told me that he felt the same way and that Heavenly Father was speaking to us to let us know that what we read was true. That's how I know the scriptures are true. We can know the truth by the power of the Holy Ghost. God wants each of us to know that the Book of Mormon is true. How do we recognize the Holy Ghost in our own lives? The Holy Ghost is... 1. A member of the Godhead. 2. A gift that comes with baptism. and 3. A promise from Heavenly Father. The Holy Ghost is like a warm blanket around your heart. He can comfort you when you feel sad or scared. The Holy Ghost is like an alarm. He can warn you of danger. He can guide you away from what will hurt you. The Holy Ghost is like a gentle teacher. He can tell you what is true and help you remember what you've learned. The Holy Ghost is like a best friend who wants to be with you always. By making good choices, you invite the Holy Ghost to stay with you. The Holy Ghost is like a sign, helping you to know where to go. As you make choices, He can help you stay on the path to eternal life. The Holy Ghost is like a messenger from Heavenly Father. The Holy Ghost can help you feel God's love and understand what He wants you to know. The Holy Ghost. What are some things you can do to feel the Holy Ghost? Share my blank by talking with my friends and family about what I believe. What could that word be? Testimony. Share my testimony. Next one. Take the... What is this? That's right. Sacrament on Sunday. Obey my... Mom and Dad. Talk to my Heavenly Father every day by saying my... Prayers. Read my... Scriptures, like the Book of Mormon. Listen to the words of... Who's that guy? Prophets and Apostles at General Conference. Show love to my... Who should we show love to? Family, by helping out at home. Learn about... Who is that? right Jesus Christ in primary now we need to write the letters from the colored spaces above in the blanks below so first we've got an O an R M R C O F E T Now we need to unscramble the letters to find another name for the Holy Ghost. What do you guys think it is? The Comforter. 
Inviting the Spirit. You can do many things to invite the Holy Ghost to be with you. The pictures below show four ideas. Pick one idea and make an extra effort to do it. Then tell someone about how you felt as you did it. Number one, sharing. Number two, praying. Number three, helping. Number four, singing. Which one are you going to focus on first? Heavenly Father gives us spiritual gifts. Moroni described the gifts that God gives to his children when they have faith in him. Now we're going to unwrap a bunch of different presents. In each present that we unwrap is going to be one of the gifts that Heavenly Father gives us. For behold, to one is given by the Spirit of God that he may teach the word of wisdom, and to another that he may teach the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, and to another exceedingly great faith, and to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, and again to another that they may work mighty miracles, and again to another that he may prophesy concerning all things. And again to another, the beholding of angels and ministering spirits. And again to another, all kinds of tongues, which means languages. And again to another, the interpretation of languages. These are just nine examples of the many, many gifts that Heavenly Father gives us. Everybody I know has lots of talents. How can I find something I'm good at? By Talentless in Toronto. Dear Talentless, did you know God gave everyone special gifts and talents, including you? You're not talentless at all. Sometimes it takes a while to figure out what our talents are. That's okay. Just keep trying to use your gifts to help others. With Heavenly Father's help, you can even gain new talents. He made you a truly special person, and you do amazing things. Never forget that. The Friend. Here are just a few of the gifts Heavenly Father might have given you. Circle ones you have already. Underline ones you might want to practice. What other ones can you think of? Listening. Faith building things, making people laugh, teamwork, cooking, writing, loving others, imagining, using time wisely, reading, and this one's blank. Think of more on your own. Here are even more examples of spiritual gifts. If you don't have any of these ones, think of which ones you want most, and then work toward those. Having faith in Jesus Christ. Having faith to be healed. Listening to the Holy Ghost. Learning languages. Teaching the Gospel. Being wise. Recognizing what is right and wrong. Gaining knowledge. Believing others' testimonies. Noticing if someone needs a friend. Showing love. Understanding the scriptures. Keeping a journal. Being a loyal friend. Being kind. There are many gifts, and to every person is given a gift by the Spirit of God. Remember that every good gift cometh of Christ. Bonus challenge. Think or write about a time when you used one of your gifts to help someone. God has given us spiritual gifts that we might bless others.
Parable of the Talents by Jean Bingham. Jesus told a story or parable about a man who lent some coins to three people who worked for him. Then the man went away. While he was gone, two of the people worked hard and used their coins to earn more coins to give back to the man. But one person just buried his coin because he was afraid of losing it. When the man came back, he gave rewards to those who increased the coins he lent them. But he took the coin away from the person who hadn't even tried to increase it. Like the man in the parable, Heavenly Father has given each of us something very valuable. Not coins, but special abilities or talents, like singing, showing love, running, or helping others. Like the people in the parable, you have to work hard to make your talents grow. How can you follow Jesus' teachings by using and improving your talents? You will feel happier and help others when you do. A talent is a special ability, like a talent for drawing. But in Jesus' time, the word talent meant an amount of money that was of great worth. How are the two types of talents alike? Family Talent Show Plan a show to share your talents. Have each family member share something they are good at, like reading aloud, baking a treat, performing a musical number, telling a joke, doing a somersault, or sharing a happy smile. As each person finishes sharing a talent, have the other members of the family tell something good that they have noticed about that person. For refreshments, combine each person's favorite fruit to make a yummy fruit salad. Let's take a closer look at each of the five letters in the word bless. The letter B stands for begin with prayer. Did you know that Jesus spent an entire night in prayer before choosing his disciples? At other times, he went off on his own to pray before starting his day. If Jesus, who is the Son of God, spent time in prayer to get through his day, how much more should you? Next, the letter L stands for listen and look for opportunities. When you start with prayer in your work life, praying not only for yourself, but also for your co-workers, then you should also be expecting a response from God. Ephesians 2 verse 10 clearly states that there are good works already prepared in advance for you to do, and God wants to show you what these are. So be sure to take time to listen and look for the opportunities he has prepared. The next letter, E, stands for Exercise Obedience. As you pray to God and look for opportunities that he has prepared for you, then the next step is to obediently act on it. Whether that's just to listen to someone you work with or to help someone that you normally don't see. Once the prompting of the Holy Spirit is clear, you need to step out and just do it. S stands for see everyone in God's image. Within the organizational hierarchy of the workplace, many see themselves as better than others. Executive as higher than manager, manager higher than staff, and worker over cleaning person. But how wrong is that? All of us are created in God's image, and no one is better than another. The last letter, S, stands for serve others. Jesus himself taught this by adopting the lowly role of washing his disciples' feet before serving them dinner. Imagine the impact you might make by serving others who otherwise think of themselves as being in competition with you. Wow! Five work days, five more letters. Can you bless others at your work? Jesus Christ wants me to come unto him. In Moroni chapter 10 verse 32, Moroni says, to come unto Christ and that we can be perfected in him if we get rid of all of our bad habits and deny ourselves of anything that takes us further away from God and that when we love God with all of our strength and our minds then because of his grace and his love we can be perfected in Christ.
In Idaho Falls, there's a beautiful airport. Near the airport is another very useful and beautiful part of the city, Freeman Park. Looking down the river from the park, the majestic Idaho Falls Temple can be seen, white and clean, standing on high ground. Both of these beautiful, useful places, the regional airport and Freeman Park, used to be sanitary landfills. A sanitary landfill is where garbage is buried and the land is reclaimed. The definition of reclaim is to recall from wrong or improper conduct, to rescue from an undesirable state. I have lived in Idaho Falls nearly my whole life. I have contributed a lot of garbage to those landfills over the course of more than 50 years. What would the city fathers think if on a given day I showed up on one of the grassy fields in Freeman Park with a backhoe and started digging large holes? When they asked me what I was doing, I would respond, I wanted to dig up the old garbage that I had made over the years. I suspect that they would tell me there was no way to identify my personal garbage, that it had been reclaimed and buried long ago. I suppose that they would wonder why anyone would want to destroy something so beautiful and useful in an attempt to dig up old garbage. Is it possible to reclaim a life that through reckless abandon has become so strewn with garbage that it appears that the person is unforgivable? What about the person who has changed their life but just can't forgive themselves? The prophet Alma taught that the Son of God suffereth according to the flesh that he might take upon him the sins of his people that he might blot out their transgressions according to the power of his deliverance. The atonement of Jesus Christ is available to each of us. It can clean, reclaim, and sanctify even you. show God that we love Him? Well, we can get a little bit of help from our own Articles of Faith 3 and 4. Article of Faith 3 says that we believe that through the atonement of Christ, all mankind may be saved by obedience to the laws and ordinances of the gospel. So, obedience. Number 4 talks about how we have to have faith and repent and then be baptized, and then get the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that concludes this week's lesson. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Our closing song is I'm Trying to Be Like Jesus from the Come Follow Me Music 2020 YouTube channel. Mm -hmm.